answer it. Answer within a minute. You've got some nerve to ignore my calls. Um, excuse me? Who are you? I think you must be mistaking me for someone else. It was an unknown contact, so I didn't answer you. How dare you talk to me like that? How can I be wrong? How dare you blame me and make fun of me? Jesus! Why did Hank choose this lady? Hold on, could it be Hank's mom? Excuse me, I have a name. First of all, I don't approve of you. Um, I mean, Mrs. Smith. Good, so you know about me, right? Then why didn't you introduce yourself before? Hank told me about you. You two have been dating for three years already, right? If that's the case, it's normal for you to come and introduce yourself before the marriage proposal. Why didn't you tell me until now? You must have no manners at all. Well, I went to see you this time to introduce myself as a fiancé. You wanted me to introduce myself when we started dating? Yeah, it's obvious, isn't it? You don't even know that? You should be saying something like, I'm dating your precious son. How can you not come to introduce yourself? You have no common sense, and yet you try to make fun of me. I had never heard of such common sense. I apologize for that. Hank thought it wasn't a good idea for me to visit his parents' house, so I was holding back. I'm sure he was. If I had known he was dating a lady like you, I would have broken off two of you. I only want him to date with girls I approve of. Um, how did you get my contact? While Hank was taking a bath, I looked at his phone. I searched for your phone number. I really wanted to say something to you. Did you look at your son's phone without his permission? I'm his mother. What's wrong with looking at my son's phone? Hank is my only son. He is the heir to our family. I have to keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't get any bad woman. Hank is an adult. You can't just look at his phone without permission. It's an invasion of privacy. What? Do you know who are you talking to? I wonder if you know what kind of work I do. And you're talking to me like that? I don't know your profession, Mrs. Smith. I mean, what does your profession have to do with this conversation? Of course it does. I'm a lawyer. So is my husband. I know more about the law than you do. What kind of work do you do? Hank said he would never tell me what you do. I guess you don't have much of a job, do you? I am a civil servant. I see, which is not a bad job, but compared to me, it's nothing. People say civil servants are basically just puppets of the government. Compared to us, who are lawyers, we are much more intelligent. What about your parents? They are both working for the government, too. Oh, really? Well, that makes them even more out of character with us. My family is a lawyer and we make good money. I don't care what you say about me, but why do I have to be told about my parents as well? Because Hank wants to marry you. When it comes to marriage, it's a house-to-house -house bond, right? If he marries into a family of incompetent civil servants, it will lower the status of my family. Hank needs to marry a daughter from a respectable family. I love Hank, and I want to marry him. Even if you don't approve of me right now, I will do my best so that one day you will approve of me. That's impossible. You can change your parents' job, can you? Until now, when a girlfriend who didn't suit Hank came along, I made him break up with her. You should break up with him too. After that conversation, Hank apologized to me. He told me that whenever he introduced a girlfriend in the past, if she didn't like her, she would secretly contact her and break them up. So, he said he was very worried about going to his parents this time. Of course, I love Hank and I want to marry him. So... I tried to get her approval without breaking out with him. 
and I decided to keep in touch with her. Happy birthday to you, Mrs. Smith. Oh, you know, thank you. I'm not happy to be greeted by a low-class lady, but I will say thank you as a courtesy. I look forward to seeing you at the party tonight. Party? Are you coming to? Hank has asked me to come. Well, if you attend as Hank's friend, you may attend. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. It's also Hank's engagement party, you know? What? Because people who are very important to me will be at my birthday party. I thought it would be a great opportunity to announce Hank's engagement. Wow, thank you very much. I'm glad you approve of me. Huh? What are you happy about? Jesus, do you think it's here? What? It's not about us? Of course not. The fiancé is not you, of course. She's the daughter of a trading company, Hank's ex-girlfriend. What? What do you mean? I like her a lot. But Hank said he couldn't keep up with her financial sense. That's why they broke up. She had a perfect family background. But I'm glad I invited her to my birthday party. Does Hank know about it? It's a surprise for Hank. But the new fiancé loves Hank so much. She seems to be happy to receive my surprise. If I announce it at the party, Hank won't be able to refuse, you know? If he says no, it's like damaging the reputation of both families. I'm sure he won't do it and accept my surprise. If you're coming to the party too, it's going to be a great party, don't you think? You should take a good look with your own eyes. That is what kind of girl would be a much for Hank and my family. Well, you've done a good job too. You message me almost every day for a month. You were trying to get me to like you and agree to marry you, weren't you? Your shallow plan is so obvious. I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. If Hank wants it, I will back out. But if Hank still chooses me, I won't give up on marrying Hank. After all this, you still won't give up? You really have a stubborn spirit, huh? Well, I'm officially inviting you to today's party. By all means, bring a tissue with you so you can cry. <laughs> I had a lot to say to her, but after I talked to Hank, we both decided not to attend. Since Hank also did not attend, there was no mention of an engagement. Since I couldn't resolve things through messaging her, I've decided to visit their house and go to formally introduce myself for marriage. We got down on our knees and begged. But the moment I looked up, she suddenly stopped me. I was simply shocked by her action, and gradually it turned into anger. How is your cheek? It's your fault for coming to my house suddenly without an appointment. Rude people deserve to be slapped out. Unlike you, I'm busy with work. Just because you are not busy as me doesn't mean you can do whatever you want in my house. He wanted to bring me to his parents' house for a formal introduction again. But both of you were insisted that I wasn't good enough to be his wife. That's what Hank told me. Of course. I was humiliated on my birthday. The truth is, I had told everyone that I was going to announce Hank's engagement. It's fine that you're not coming, but even Hank didn't attend my party. Not only me, but the new fiancé was also humiliated. You made this happen on your own. I hope you can take responsibility. It wasn't my own decision. Hank and I discussed it, and we decided not to attend. That's a lie. Hank cares for me. He is a wonderful son who cares about his mother. But because he met you, he turned against me and his father. It's all your fault. You really hate me. Yes, I hate you. No matter what you try to do, it's impossible to like you. I'm sorry I slapped you when you came all the way over here. But we're both lawyers. So there's no point in demanding me or something. 
Don't think for a second that daughter of a low-class family will go against us. My father is a judge. What? I told you, my father is a judge. No way, that's true. My dad know about you. He said you were in law school together. But you never said anything about your parents was a judge. Well, I said they are civil servants, right? That's true, but... By the way, my mother is also a judge and I'm a prosecutor. You're lying, right? You lied to me. I am a national civil servant. I am not lying. Even Hank never said about that. Many people get defensive if I tell them about my job, so... I told him to keep quiet. If you ever attempt to use your legal authority, I will tell them my actual job. That's what I told him. I really wish those moments wouldn't happen. But if you're up for it, we'll just be honest and tell our side too. Wait! When you say your father knows me, I don't know anyone named Anderson. I have a good memory, you know? Now I know you're lying. Anderson is my mother's surname. My father took my mom's surname when they got married. My father's maiden name was Williams. Williams? That top student? That's a lie! I can't believe he raised a lady like you! I heard you always borrowed my dad's notes. Yes, I always borrowed his notes because it was very organized. Um, did he say anything else about me? Oh. The Valentine's Day story. That was funny. He remembered? That's not true. It was a misunderstanding. You gave him a love letter, right? But I heard he was dating my mother, who was two years younger than him at the time. And he rejected you. That's not true. That was a prank. I was just teasing him because he was a top student. Really? That's funny. Even after he rejected you, you kept following my dad around. Even when they were on a date, you tried to interrupt them. I heard you were a stalker to a level that would make anyone cringe. Stop it! It's my dark history! I've already told my father everything you did and said to me this time. What? What did he say? What does your father think of me? He's quite angry. Oh no! I never thought you were the daughter of my first love. Well now, I notice you look like your dad. And you look smart too. You don't have to try to be nice. You've said a lot of things about me before and I know how you really feel about me. Your family is different from ours. So, I will talk to Hank again. If we get married, your family will lose its prestige, right? Our family is lower status than yours, so please be positive about the marriage. I would like to apologize directly to you. I want to see your father too. You don't have to do this. You are so busy that you don't have time to meet with me, right? I will talk it over with Hank. Wait a minute. Please marry my Hank. I couldn't stop laughing at her new attitude when I told her about my parents. I cannot forget what she did to me, but I told Hank that I still want to marry him. Hank felt guilty and blamed himself and he promised me I would not be hurt again. So, Hank came up with a great idea. Um, how have you been feeling since then? Mrs. Smith, it's been a while. Oh no, you don't have to call me like that. You can call me mom. Just talk to me more casually. We're family now. No, no. I'm a stranger. So, I will continue to act like this. What made you message me? I was just wondering if the scar on your cheek was healed. It's healed nicely, so I'm fine. Thank goodness. I felt bad about it. But you know, it just happened. I didn't do it intentionally. I see. Well, I don't care anymore. Really? Then that's good. If you want, why don't you come to have dinner with us? 
I haven't been able to get in touch with Hank lately. I'm worried about what happened to the marriage. We're fine. Hank was concerned about it. But I still wanted to marry him. My parents like Hank very much too. So the marriage is still going. Your parents? I'm so glad. I'm so happy that you two are getting married. I will do my best to support you. Let's have dinner to celebrate. Your parents are welcome to join us. It's been a while since I've had a chance to talk with your dad too. Hank is the only one my parents like. My parents have mixed feelings for you. What? So, they are only welcome about Hank. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised that you are still hung up on your first love, even though you are married. Don't be so cold. When we get married, we will be family. Your parents won't be strangers to us, you know? You will remain strangers. Hank will cut off ties with you. Huh? What are you talking about? Hank is our only son! It's what Hank wants. He's fed up with his parents and wants to disown them. What's going to happen to us if he's going to disown us? Hank is my only son! I don't know about that, but he said that he wants to give up his family name already. My father and mother both accepted Hank. Wait a minute, I didn't hear anything about that. Besides, you messaged me today because Hank didn't send any money, right? That's why you tried to talk to me, wasn't it? How did you know that? Hank told me, on payday, you were always asking for money. You love branded stuff and you were always short of money. I heard that law firms don't have many clients either. So, he's not going to support us financially anymore? If you live decently, you would have a hard time. That's what he said. You keep saying he's your only son, but in the end, you don't want to give him up because you want to get money from him, right? But we are both lawyers. We have to have a lavish life. We are a family, so it's natural that we help each other with money, isn't it? If we want to help each other, then yes. But in your case, you were dependent on Hank. But the payment is due today. If I don't pay the rent for the office, we have to close the office. We won't be able to earn money. I guess you deserve it. Please, lend me the money. Just lend it to me. You don't have to give it to me. No, I won't lend you money. I'm not stupid enough to lend money to someone who has no chance of repaying it. Then, give me the money. Your mother-in-law is in trouble. I can give you two. How audacious can you be? You have a lot of savings, right? Come on! I've spent a lot of my savings. We're going to have a big wedding here. What? A wedding? And that hotel is very prestigious. When you invite people related to your business, I had to have a wedding at a place like this. It's very popular, and I couldn't get a reservation for a long time. Suddenly, the wedding hall got cancelled. So, we were able to have a wedding one month early. I've been preparing for the wedding for a while now, cutting down on my sleeping hours. I know it's short notice, but I wanted to make the ceremony as nice as possible. You're getting married in a month? I didn't get the invitation. Because I didn't invite you. But I'm Hank's mother. It's not right that I'm not invited to the wedding. I will attend the wedding no matter what. I don't think you should. What if you come to the wedding and ruin it? If you have a lawyer badge, you understand, don't you? Yeah, I know, but... But it's not right that the mother isn't invited to the wedding. The other attendees would understand how I feel. We didn't send you a wedding invitation. There will be people at this wedding who know the law as well as you do. Then please, just lend me the money for this month. If I can pay the rent today, I will be able to leave. I'm so sorry. I know you tried so hard to raise Hank, and I really appreciate it. From now on, our family will support Hank. Well then, 
take care. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry for what I did to you and to Hank. As a mother, I really wanted to choose the right person for him. I'm sorry, I crossed the line. I'm sorry, I apologize. Please, don't abandon me. Please, let me attend the wedding at least. It's my only son's big day. Please. They sold their house and luxury goods and managed to pay the rent for their office. Now, Hank's parents are working very hard together. I heard that they used to be selective about their work. But now, they are taking on jobs no matter how small. Because of that, they have become a reputable law firm. My father always wanted a son. And he loves Hank like his son. They often go out without me. To be honest, we got married early because I was pregnant. Hank's parents seem to be changed in a good way. We are planning to send them a picture of their grandchild after the baby is born. Hi, Michelle. Long time no see. I finally know where you live. Huh? What do you mean? Do you track down my apartment? Well, it's been seven years, you know. I had a hard time finding you. You hid from me pretty well. What do you want? Do you know how much trouble you've caused? Ken and I had to leave our hometown because of you. I'm finally getting used to this place. What's wrong with you? You stay away from us. Oh, it was Ken's fault for rejecting me. I offered to go out with him because he was good looking. I thought we would become a perfect couple, but he rejected me. You guys are not suitable for me. I know what you did after that. You told everyone Ken became your stalker because you rejected him. That's right. It's one of the dark pasts I want to forget. Of course, everyone believed me, and I succeeded in removing you and Ken from this town. If you're relieved that you succeeded in getting rid of us, hmm? Just leave us alone. Oh my, your friend took the time to text you. You should be more pleased. What are you trying to do? But I'm not the same person I used to be. Hmm? You are the daughter of a corporate president, but you can't use that title anywhere anymore. Hmm. Well, it's already late. Huh? Should I tell you or not? What? I stole your boyfriend. What? What boyfriend? I live by myself. You're lying. I know you live with your boyfriend in apartment 3A. What? I made out with him while you were at work. You guys are done. Why? My dad's company opened a branch office near your apartment. I was assigned to be the branch manager, so I moved here. I saw you on my first day off and followed you to your apartment. Oh my god! I only identified your apartment that day, but I returned later and I found out you were living with a handsome guy. I don't know about a boyfriend, but if you find my apartment, I'll move out as soon as possible. What? I don't want anything to do with you. Oh no! I just found you! We can be friends again! You've got to be kidding me! Hello, Ken? Can I come over and stay the night? Hi, Michelle, what's going on? Naomi found my apartment. What? She's getting really snippy, and she's talking nonsense. I have a feeling I'm about to get into trouble. I'm going to pack quickly and take a cab to your place. Let me stay with you for a while. Okay, be careful. Hey, Michelle, where are you? Yeah, I'm in a cab. Then can you go to April's place? April? Yes, just tell the driver to change the destination. April will pay if you need more money for the cab. I will be okay with the money. I just told the driver about the change. So why April? April is at my apartment right now, and I told her about your situation. She pointed out that Naomi may come to my place looking for you, so please go to April's place for now. I can't do that to your fiancé. 
Your safety is most important. April loves you, so she's happy to help you. I want you to rely on her for this. I see. I'll be there then. Yep. April is going home now to wait for you. Say thank you to April. I will. What's this? You said you would move. But you haven't, have you? I asked your boyfriend about you, and he said you went to work as usual. Well, if that's the case, I should make out with your boyfriend again. At first, I just wanted to harass you, but he's so good looking. I'm going to steal him seriously now, and I will kick you out of this town again. Naomi? Um... Hi, Michelle. I've been making love to your boyfriend since this morning. Oops, he's my boyfriend now. He says he loves me and he's going to break up with you. Sorry. What are you doing? Whose place is that? What? Again, I live alone. I have had a boyfriend, but I don't have one now. You must have misunderstood something. You can't try to escape from me like that. He says he doesn't want to be with you anymore. He's going to pack up and move in with me. Okay. Well, he'll be gone when you get back from work. I'll also spread rumors so you won't try to stay in this apartment. I've already started making arrangements to move out, so I don't mind. Oh, well, I wonder how long you can keep up your lies and bluster. Michelle, I went to see what was going on with Naomi. How is she doing? It's pretty messed up. I also found out about the guy that Naomi thought was your boyfriend. Nice! You are a good detective. I'm not as good as April, though. So I'm going over there now. I want to meet you a little far from April's place to be safe. April suggested the coffee shop in East Side Building. We'll meet there in an hour. Okay. Michelle, how are you? A lonely woman who just got dumped? Are you enjoying your freedom? Oh, I know why you are here now. You were transferred because you made a compliance violation at your father's company. Huh? And you are the only person at your office. There's no branch on the company website in this neighborhood. Hey! Were you trying to relieve the stress by nagging me? Why? How? How do I know that? I won't tell you. What are you doing? You went crazy after your boyfriend dumped you? This boyfriend? Could it be Holden? Yes. Oh, I knew it! Why are you asking me? Don't you at least remember your boyfriend's name? You said 3A, right? That's right. It looks like you're finally ready to lose. I lived in room 3B. Huh? Holden lives in 3A with his real girlfriend. The third floor, apartment A. What? The management took our apartment number signs off the other day. Okay, why? They wanted to paint all the doors. I think you got the correct address. But the next time you visited the apartment, you must have knocked on the wrong door. You thought Holden was my boyfriend and seduced him. That's what happened. What? Did I not bother you at all? Yes, you did. I moved to a new place the other day. Seriously? Oh, but you had to quit your job for that. If you didn't, I would have found you, wouldn't I? Oh, no. You're unemployed. That's too bad. Aww. No problem. That's totally fine. Why not? I work remotely. I can work from anywhere as long as I have a computer and internet access. What? I had already saved to move out, so it wasn't a painful expense. The only damage I can say is that I was surprised by your first message in seven years. Where are you? Why? I'm going to hunt you down. Is this really the time for you to say that? 
Say it. Where do you live now? You really don't have time for this, Naomi. Huh? I have two pieces of unfortunate news for you. What? You're bluffing. Number one. About Holden, the guy you thought was my boyfriend? He tends to be highly obsessed with his women. What? His real girlfriend had a hard time breaking up with him, and then you came along. What? She told me she was grateful to you. She said, I don't understand why she likes that pimp, but thank you for taking him. A pimp? Yes, she had already moved out. She is happy now. Huh? Oh, no! I can't believe he's such a guy. Why didn't you tell me? I just found out. There's no way I could have told you. It's terrible! The unfortunate news, number two. Actually, my brother has a fiancé. Her name is April. What? April? You know her, right? No way! She's the daughter of the CEO of my dad's company, Miss April? She's been supporting us since you kicked us out of our hometown. Now she's like a little sister to me. April also loves me like an older sister, and soon we'll be sisters-in-law. You are pathetic. Pathetic? Yes. If you hadn't messed with me, nothing would have happened. Huh? What? You're a branch manager, right? That's right. You're not working at all. What? You were messing with me, also flirting with Holden in the middle of the daytime. In other words, during working hours. Since that was confirmed, April's father told your dad to take a suitable measure. What? Hey, what are you doing? What if I get fired? Well, you'll probably be fired. Even though it was a branch office, you had a chance. I can't believe you crushed it like this. That's too bad. Please help me out. Huh? We've known each other since we were little. That's more than friends. What are you talking about? Of course I'm not going to answer it. I doubt we'll ever see each other again. I hope you'll be happy with the pimp. No! No way! Ken found out that Naomi was fired. This branch manager arrangement was the last mercy of her father. It turned out that she was not doing her job at all. The president disowned Naomi. Holden the pimp is completely obsessed with Naomi. Naomi has no choice but to stay with Holden. Holden monitors Naomi all the time. Naomi works part-time within a two-mile radius of their apartment to support him. Furthermore, she found out that the marriage certificate has been issued. Due to emotional distress, she has been very depressed. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.